Uh, I'm going to show you one more thing and then we'll start entering some records. So what I want to do is for my postal code, our postal code is like this M4J for example, 2J2. This is the format of the postal code in Cam Canada where the first character is an alphabet, then a number, then an alphabet and usually a space, number, alphabet, number. So if you wanted, you could actually create a input mask that will allow you to do that. So let me show you how you can create your own input mask. Now what are input masks? Input masks are used whenever you have a information that will be having a common format. That means my telephone number, my telephone numbers are different but my format is the same. Okay, That's where you can use input mask. So let's come back to design view. Always be careful to click on the right row that you want to do that for. So I click on postal code, input mask in the bottom here, field properties, and I'm going to start the wizard, the docs. Now what I want to do is I want to create a new one. So I'm going to click on edit list. And in here I want to create a new one because if you started writing something here it will change your phone number input mask and we don't want to do that so we have used this button here on the bottom it's got a arrow with an asterisk I click it now I've got a blank one and I'm gonna write here postal code and here we want to understand what do I mean by input mask? So you can click on the help button. Okay. When you click on the help button you get this section on the right hand side and then click on this valid input mask characters and I'm just going to scroll down a little. So these are understanding of the input mask. When you type the character 0 it means in that first place a digit can be entered. So if I type here in the front here 0, that means I will not be able to type a postal code which will be starting with the character M or any character because that section is supposed to have a number. But if I wanted to add a number then I'll have to look for something else. So you see there it says L. L means characters, letters A to Z, entry is required because I do want them to I want to force them to enter that so I'm just going to type shift and L and there is another thing that I'm looking for which is uh, where is it and one more sign here this one if I put this symbol it means all characters will be lowercase if I put this symbol it means all characters will be uppercase so even if I type a lowercase character it will automatically be uppercase so what I'll do is I'll start with that character and I'll type L now I after that the second character in my postal code is a digit so I need to figure out which number to use to get people to enter a digit so if you look there where it says zero, zero stands for digit zero through nine entry required because I want the one which is entry required and not the one which is entry not required. So, so you can force people. So zero, capital L space zero, L zero. Because our post our postal code is M5J, which is letter number letter. So now. I'm going to try a sample so I'm going to type lowercase m and you see it's automatically becoming uppercase it also left and proper space so this is done I can click close now I should have postal code right there and I'm going to hit finish and you see it adds that thing there save it I'm going to close this help window and then I come back to the data sheet view and let's see I'm gonna to come to our postal code and let's start typing M so now you see I've made my life a little easy 
so I don't have to. And if you try to type something, say instead of typing M, if I try to type a number, it won't work. I have to type a character first. So here you learn one more trick about input mask and how you can create your own by looking at the help section. You can create your own as you need it. I'm just going to pause the video for a few minutes and I'm going to enter maybe 7 to 8 or 10 records. I'm just going to pause the video. Alright, so I've typed a few records here, like um, around 10. And just wanted to show you here that up here when I come to the notes section, if I wanted, I could just stop typing. So you see, as, as I keep on typing and it will let me type. I cannot see it, but it's still there. And this is the link. So if I click it, it will start launching the Internet Explorer or Firefox. So that's the hyperlink. And for the picture, I right click on it and I say insert object. I say create from file. I can browse and I'll go to the desktop and I've got a picture koala and I can click OK and the picture is there, it's just not visible but it is there and I'm going to do something different with this male female sex part but I'll come to that a little later okay so now we have our records but remember any changes you want to make in terms of certain things you have to go to the design view that will impact everything and here is my 123 number which I cannot change because access controls it if you wanted control over this you would have to have your data type for the primary key as number or text depending on what you want it text means you can only enter words and number combinations so I can type a 100 number would mean just a number but now that because we've already started typing it's just a little difficult to change stuff so it's always good to think about these things in advance before you start doing these things this is still okay for now as we don't have to do anything uh, now here I'm just going to show a few things in terms of your database functionality that allows you to do filtering and sorting and things like that because once you start having hundreds and hundreds of records how do you get to what you want to get to so the first button is called sorting which is putting things in alphabetical order so say for example I click on my last name and I use this A to Z button which says sort ascending so it will put things in alphabetical order by the last name so if I click it now you see all my records have changed so now this is in alphabetical order D E F J is together else in the R and S if I use the Z to A so it will put the S and the Z's first and then it goes to A I can click on first name and I can choose sort so you can do that Okay. and you can do that by anything if I click on date of birth and I choose sort A to Z it will sort it by date so there it is it's starting with 1956 1964 1970 and everything is rearranged itself this is why you always want to choose anything to do with date your data type as date and time so I'm just come to the design view because if you don't do that I'm just going to come back to data sheet. If you don't do that, your sorting will not work for date because it will try to sort things in alphabetical order rather than date. So it will be looking at the month and putting things in order of that. So that's why this is good. Okay. So this is called sorting. The next thing I want to talk about is called filtering. So if you have a bunch of stuff and you just want to get to a few things, so say if I click on this last name, Do and I use this filter by selection button I only see the doors and I can press the filter button again to remove it okay I can highlight let's see if this works I can highlight this 416 that's like the area code and I use filter by selection I only see the telephone number starting with 416 press it to remove it okay same thing with 905 and it works. Just have to be careful I think if you highlight the brackets it may not work so just highlight the numbers and it will work. Just the number. It's a little tricky. Filter by selection.
647 area code remove now these things are good if you only want it to filter by one thing but if you want to filter by multiple criteria you'll have to click on filter by form okay I'm just going to ignore that and um, you can choose something here so I can say find me last name Doe in the city of Toronto that means I'm trying to match two different criteria rather than just one and I can use the apply filter button now it matches Doe and Toronto I only have one match now if, if it didn't match both the criteria you will not go get no results and I can press this again to remove the filter okay so sorting filter by selections filter by form the next thing I want to show you is the find button if you wanted to find certain things so if I click find now what do I not find so I'll say let's find Jones now where do you want to find Jones is Jones in contact ID contact ID has only numbers so if you don't change this you will never find Jones so you click here and I can say look in the whole table and match whole field you can choose different criteria any part start of the field and different things match case and I can hit find now you see it highlights the word Jones I can even click on replace and if I want it I can say you know what find door and then change it to doors or whatever you feel like always remember it just should say the whole table now I can do one at a time replace or I can just replace all it's asking me are you sure I say yes now let's see I'm gonna close this the door has become doors so that's the find and the replace option this button here when you click it it will just take you to a new record so if I just click it it will come back down here starting a new record okay and the button next to it will allow me to delete a record so if I want I can hit that and it will delete it now once you delete it you cannot undo uh, if you are familiar with the undo button the undos will not help you if you do that you'll have to create find it back from your uh, backup if you decide to choose delete here and you can always extend your rows as soon as you do one it will extend all of them it's not like Excel where you have to do all of them uh, one by one I can extend my columns so you see now I can see the whole thing by extending it I can close this asking me to save I say yes and you see I've got my contact list that's the first we created using the wizard and here's my contact list one I can double click on it to open it back to enter my data or I can click on it go to design view directly to go back to design view and I can come back to data sheet view you can even right click on it rename it you can delete it if you wanted to I'm going to double click on it to open it and uh, just a few more things and I'll end this video so if you want it you can export this information to Word or Excel or something like that so I believe it's under it's been a while since I've used 2003 so I have to remember where it is okay tools office links and if I want I can say publish it in Microsoft Office Word so when I click it it's gonna start Microsoft Word and now here's my information in Word and the same way I can go to tools office links I can analyze with Office Excel um, for people who are aware of mail merge and if you have looked at my mail merge video you can use this to go straight to Microsoft mail merge right from here because if you think about it in mail merge you need contacts and your names and things like that so this one has your first name last name and addresses and you can use it in mail merge I believe I have actually covered most of the important things here uh, in Microsoft Office 2003 access for tables.
but I think before I add, I think I just remember a few more things here. So really small features. These are good to know because they ask you these type of questions when you take an exam. So it's good to know where some of these things are. So I wanted to talk about some of this feature here for hiding columns and unhiding columns and things like that. So say for example, I click here and I don't want to see this column. Like I really don't care about the numbering system. So I can go to format and I can say hide the column. Now you see that column is hiding. I can click on, now I'm in the first name column. I can even click here, that will highlight it, doesn't matter. Format, hide column. To bring it back, format, unhide, and just put the check marks back. Okay. Now, in our, my case, you see I have to like scroll across and when I scroll across I lose some of this information. So say for example when I scroll across I wanted to leave this last name always visible. So I just click here or click in there, go to format, click in the drop down to expand it and I can say freeze column. When I hit freeze column you see the column went to the left. Now when I go sideways you'll find that no matter how far I go that column always stay there. You see that last name still stays there. Okay. I can go back format and I can unfreeze all column. Now if I want to move this guy back after first name I click here. I get that arrow left click and hold it and drag it after last name and drop it. Okay. Now if you wanted to freeze more than one column you have to highlight both, format, freeze. So now you see both of them are frozen. Now when I go across, they'll freeze both the columns. So format, unfreeze, highlight them, left click and hold it, drag it, and drop it after contact ID, and I'm back to where they were. For some reason it doesn't move back when you unfreeze things. A um, lot of your buttons like sorting and filtering, you can always find it in the records and there is the sorting and the filtering. So you always will find that there are different places where they are situated. Thanks for watching. I'll be making a next video soon, hopefully in a day or two, talking about queries and forms and reports. Thanks.